a low budget indian movie with a production budget of just 2 million dollars spread like wildfire just because of word of mouth due to its compelling plot and near resemblance to indian culture so hello my dear viewers this is your host hemant sardana and i welcome you to indian video tapes today we will be recapping an action thriller indian kannada movie kantara oh kantara actually means a mystical forest this super hit needs no introduction and is rated 8.2 on imdb so let's start with the movie but before that i request you to please support me and subscribe to my channel the movie starts in the year 1847 there was a great king in southern india he had a prosperous kingdom a loving family the people adore and respect the king what else does a king need despite having an abundance of wealth the king was deprived of inner peace and can't even sleep during nights the king visits numerous temples shrines hermits in search of peace but all attempts seem futile the kingdom priest suggests that the king must travel alone in search of divine power the king obliges the priest and starts his journey as the king travels he encounters a forest and hears the strange sound of ghagra Despite the sounds unsettling nature the king followed the sound source and arrived at a stone where he gave up his weapons and folded his hands in reverence by this time he finally feels internal peace and desires to take the stone with him right then the villagers arrive there and the king begs them to give him their demigod suddenly the demigod the deva panjurli dev possesses a man amongst the crowd and addresses the king through him Deva says that I am the protector of these people and their village. If I come with you, if I bestow you with happiness and peace, what will these villagers get in return? The king agrees on any demand they want. Just then the possessed man shouts to his fullest. And Deva commands the king to donate the land to these people till where his shout is heard and the king agrees. Deva affirms that his other side the destroyer the dark faced kuliga dev will also accompany him and if he breaks his vow panjulli dev the guardian could pardon him but kuliga dev the destroyer won't forgive him the king agrees on all terms and welcomes deva into his kingdom ever since harmony joy and serenity have been abundant in the king's life before we proceed with the story I want my non-Indian viewers to know a little basic understanding of the coastal areas of Karnataka so that they fully comprehend the story. The natives of Udupi and Mangalore, whose mother tongue is Tulu, believe in Deva. They firmly believe that the supernatural deity Panjulli Dev guards them and their family against all dangers and misfortunes. The locals worship the demigod through the performance of Bhuta Gola, in which the performer, or perhaps we should say the dancer, performs and the demigod the deva possesses the performer and communicates with the people these performers are typically members of the same generation who have continued to execute the rites and through them deva bless people deva occasionally settles disagreements between humans as well the man deva possessed in the opening scene of the movie would also be a performer from a previous generations these traditions are still observed with reverence by the populace Now that you are familiar with the local customs you can comprehend what's going to be explained further in the story The king now enjoys complete harmony joy and peace all thanks to Deva's blessings The scene then changes to 1970 where we see a young boy named Shiva with his parents the same family's next generation Shiva's father will perform in tonight's Bhuta Kola rituals As he was painting his face in yellow and getting ready for the ritual Outside a greedy descendant of the king wants his land back. His uncle replied that the land is donated to the locals and cannot be taken back. To which the successor responds that he will then seek the legal route. As the performance starts, the village priest requests the performer to wear ghagra, which is the style of anklets worn by classical Indian dancers. Shiva's father wears ghagra and starts dancing, during which the deva possesses him and talks through him to the villagers. The king's descendant steps forward and asks for the land to be returned. He also warns Deva that if the land is not returned, 
he will appeal in the court on which they were responsible by saying that your fate will be decided on the steps of the court the descendant makes absurd claims about the deity's presence he even questions is this the deva or the dancer speaking oh hearing this the demigod becomes furious and declares if you ever find me again take me as a dancer if not i am deva the possessed dancer then dashes towards the woods and disappeared inside a ring of fire nobody has ever seen shiva's father since then and later the king's descendant spits blood and dies on the steps of the court the movie then shifts to 1990 shiva is now grown up and is competing in kambala a form of time trial buffalo race and the winner gets a brand new bike shiva has been winning this race for the last 3 years and this year also he did well beating his own best time however the organizers cheat and announce the local landlord dora as a winner which enraged shiva and led to a fight with the goons and henchmen of the landlord The landlord Dora is the current descendant of the king and he settles the fight by schooling his guys and telling them that they must stand together as one village and he announces Shiva as the winner. It is revealed that Shiva and his friends do some illegal work for the landlord such as cutting wood, hunting boars and much more in exchange for alcohol, cash and food which is enough for the group to be delighted. Shiva receives some funding from the landlord for the preparation of the upcoming puja kula ritual. As per the tradition Shiva has to perform bhuta kula after his father's disappearance but being a slacker he prefers spending most of his time hunting boars eating their meat getting drunk and fighting so his brother guru has taken up the role to perform the rituals everything was going well until a new forest officer murli was transferred to the region to prevent encroachment and preserve the forest since the villagers have a little knowledge of the new laws They are clearly agitated and Shiva takes this enmity up with the officer on behalf of the villagers. Murli forbids the locals to chop wood from the forest. He doesn't accept their cultural beliefs and wants to detain Shiva and his gang while they are out for hunting. It's obvious that the forest officer begins to dislike Shiva and wants to put him behind bars. Shiva frequently get the nightmares of his father vanishing into the woods and even a few times he sees a wild boar wearing ornaments charging at him angrily. A few days later a village girl named Leela returns to the village after completing her police training to join as a forest guard. Shiva develops feelings for her and begins stalking. Leela too begins to like Shiva as well. On the first day of Leela's work The police force fences of the forest land which turns a large chunk of villagers into encroachers. This is especially troubling because Leela is one of the forest guards and this happened on her first day of work. So she is shunned by Shiva and the villagers. Shiva engages in the physical altercations with the police but is quickly toned down and the troops return after marking the land. To solve the issue the landlord Dora hires a lawyer to assist the villagers in validating their property papers or in obtaining new ones where they are currently residing since the majority of the villagers are illiterate the lawyer begins his work by getting their thumbprints the landlord appears to be a nice person so far who aids the villagers in obtaining their rights on the other side shiva and his friends start chopping more wood and hunting more wild boars thinking that this will have a negative impact on murli's image and he will be transferred once a large tree was being cut down at night and the guards were notified about the location of shiva when murli and his team reach there the tree falls on them injuring everyone inside the vehicle after this incident shiva was charged for attempt to murder so he hides and lives inside the forest shiva now has to sneak into the village to meet his mother and leela One night Shiva came to meet Leela. They both got heated up and spent the night on a tree house. The next morning they wake up to find themselves surrounded by the police who came to arrest Shiva on the charges on him. Shiva is taken into custody and he and his friends are thrown in jail. That night Guru is unable to sleep so he calls the landlord Dora and pleads for his help in releasing Shiva and correcting things on which the landlord agrees. However the things continue to deteriorate. The police was attempting to designate that area as a reserve forest land while Shiva and his friends remained in custody. One day the landlord meets Guruva on his way. He asks Guruva to accompany him and offers to drop him off at his desired location. They pass the village ironsmith Madhav on their way. The landlord offers Guruva 5 acres of land if Guruva asks the villagers to return all the donated land back to the landlord during the bhuta kula performance. 
Here the audience could see how crafty the landlord was, but Guruva denied doing it, saying that Deva wouldn't permit it. On hearing this, the landlord fatally stabbed Guruva to death. He then throws his body on the spot where the Bhutakula ritual takes place with the assistance of his goons and henchmen. The sound of the vehicle raised suspicions among the villagers. They quickly locate Guruva's body and cry for him. Shiva experienced a nightmare the same night in which he saw the possessed Guruva crying loudly outside his cell. Next day, the landlord visits the village, expressing his condolences to the family, pretending to be unaware of Guruva's killer. Soon, the forest officer Murli realizes that the landlord cunningly took all the land of the illiterate villagers and he decides to help the people. At this point, we conclude that Inspector Mudli is a good man who genuinely wants to preserve the forest. Shiva becomes devastated when the villagers inform him about Guruva's death. The landlord learns that the inspector is growing uneasy about him and will soon begin questioning, on which he releases Shiva from the prison and lies to him that the forest inspector Mudli had murdered Guruva. Shiva becomes furious upon hearing this and goes to the ironsmith to sharpen his sword and take revenge from the inspector. The ironsmith mother tells Shiva that he saw the landlord leaving with Guruva on the day of Guruva's murder, but when he returned, he was by himself, indicating that the landlord was the assassin. Unknowingly, Shiva was being followed by Dora's men and they plan on killing him. Shiva was still trying to figure out everything when the landlord's henchmen and goons attacked him, which confirms everything. In the action scene, Shiva engages in the solitary combat and vanquishes everyone, after which he goes to the landlord's house and threatens him. On his way home, he gets a glimpse of his father holding a flambeau in his hand which causes him to lose his balance and fall. After regaining consciousness, he finds only the flambeau lying on the road. Shiva notices the ornamented wild boar which he also used to see in his nightmares. On following the wild boar, Shiva reaches the exact same location where his father vanished 20 years back. There he hears Deva's divine voice from the sky, which guides him. Back in the village, the people have come to know about Dora's true nature. Shiva comes on the scene and informs them that the landlord is also responsible for Guruva's death. The police were also there who explained to the villagers that if this land is marked as a reserve forest, then the landlord will have no right on this land. The villagers can appeal in the court and they will be allowed to live here forever. The police now unites with the villagers to take revenge from the landlord. Enraged by the threat from Shiva, the landlord gathers his men to attack and finish off the entire village. For the final battle, Dora comes armed, ready to take down everyone in his way but the villagers are no less geared up for a fight. They too fought back with the police on their side. It was a fierce fight and the evil landlord enjoyed it from a distance. There were casualties on both sides of this intense conflict. Murli suffered severe injuries as well and Shiva was left alone fighting with Dora's men. One of Shiva's best friend was also killed by a gunshot from the landlord which enraged Shiva and he angrily charged at the landlord. But one of the powerful landlord's goon holds him by his neck and hangs him in the air, choking him. After his body calms down, he is thrown on his side, injuring his head on a stone, which confirms his death and the villagers lose all hope. Sometimes for no other reason than to prove a miracle, the god possesses Shiva and wreaks havoc on the assailants. The destroyer side of Deva, the dark-faced Guligadev possesses Shiva, bestowing him with superhuman powers in a moment that sent goosebumps to everyone in the cinema hall. The entire village heaves a sigh of relief and prays to their god who has possessed Shiva, praying for vengeance. That's a great performance, the haunting music and visuals. The possessed Shiva starts killing the attackers and after killing the last goon, Guligadev turns to the landlord and says that you have to pay for your sins. The protector side Panjurli Dev might have forgiven you, but I won't. With this, he kills the landlord, removing every obstacle to the village. After a few days, the Bhutakula ritual happened in the village performed by Shiva. He brings together the hands of the villagers and the officials in a gesture, telling them to protect the forest with each other's help. We also see a pregnant Leela with Shiva's son. During the performance, Shiva hears the Shrek from the forest and runs towards it. 
It is the Shrek of his lost father and the god who are one and the same as they have been for years. They meet again in the circle of fire and disappear without leaving a trace as their job is done. In the credit scene, we see Shiva's son had grown young and soon he will be a dancer performing the ritual and the deva will possess him and here the movie ends. The ending is confusing but here is the explanation. Shiva had already died at the time of fight when his head collided with the stone. He remained possessed by deva until the deity unites the villagers with the government and the work is complete. After that he disappeared with his own self. This low budget blockbuster had made more than 30 times the actual budget and is still counting. I hope you enjoyed the story. Please leave a like and do subscribe to help the channel out. Also write your thoughts and suggestions in the comments area below. I will see you soon in the next video. Till then, Namaste.